This is what they meant when they said, don't talk to strangers. In the early 1900s, a 10-year-old boy was playing in the woods when a tall man appeared and asked if he wanted to come back to his cabin for dinner. Totally caught off guard, the boy reluctantly agrees and begins walking. When they get to the cabin, the boy is relieved when he sees Paul, a family friend, sitting on the porch, so the boy happily goes inside. After they eat, the boy says thank you to the strange tall man, says bye to Paul, and then he leaves. He had only walked a few steps when he sees his family, along with Paul, running up the path towards him, frantically asking if he was okay. Confused, the boy says, I'm just fine, and he looks at Paul and he's like, why didn't you tell them I was with you at, at the cabin? And he points over his shoulder. Paul glances over the boy's shoulder and then narrows his eyes and says, you were kidnapped by a cult three days ago. No one's seen you. Terrified, the boy turns around to look at the cabin he just came from, and it's gone. All he sees is a dark forest that stretches for miles. Unless you've heard this story, there's no way you could have guessed what was on that ship. In 2012, an old Russian cruise liner was being towed to the Caribbean to be used for scrap when the tow line snapped. They tried to recover it, but it drifted into international waters, and everybody just kind of assumed it would sink, so they said, eh, forget about it. It didn't sink, because a year later they got a GPS signal from the unmanned ship showing that it had drifted nearly two-thirds of the way across the Atlantic and was now poised to strike the British coastline. At first, British authorities were not concerned with the damage this ship might cause to their coastline until scientists revealed what was on the ship. It was being towed to the Caribbean last year when it came loose during a storm. It's now feared to be infested with cannibal rats on board, who, lacking a food source, have turned on each other. Cannibal rats? That's pretty shocking. But not nearly as shocking as it was for me to see four million on my page. Thank you. This is why, this is why you should never go on a subway again. So what happened is that one night, a teenage girl was taking the subway home from work back to her house in New York. The scary part is when she went on board, she sat directly across from two men with a woman sitting in the middle. The creepy part is that the woman kept staring at her and wouldn't even blink while the two men never once looked at her. Well, at the next stop, a man with a trench coat walked in, but the girl didn't pay much attention to him. The girl kept trying to look away so that one lady wouldn't stare at her, but she just kept looking, wouldn't even blink. Well, at the next stop, that random man with a trench coat pulled out the teenage girl and dragged her out of the subway. She was screaming, asking for help, because she had no idea why this guy just pulled her out. But the guy told her to calm down and said he actually saved her life, because the woman that was staring at her was actually dead, and the two men next to her were holding her up to make her look alive. The random guy with the trench coat said if he didn't pull her out, she was going to be their next victim. Story time on my possibly haunted apartment. So, for almost my whole life, I've lived in one apartment building, and I've lived there ever since I was two or something. Anyways, back to the story. So, this apartment used to be a hospital where many people had died. There was a graveyard behind the building at that time. Didn't bother me. It was probably because that was my childhood apartment, so I didn't really care. Our apartment was in one of the patient room, patient's rooms. So it was likely someone had died there. There was a gym area downstairs that had a dark corner that I got bad vibes from. So I didn't re really like going there. We moved about four years ago and now that I'm older, I always feel like someone is watching me. Story time on how I discovered the whispering ghosts in our house. So before I moved to New York, I lived in Canada and where we lived was a very small cottage. As a five-year-old, I had a very overactive imagination and I always used to think someone was there. So two months path pass by and I started to hear whispers all around the house. First, I thought that I was just imagining things and it was not real. Two weeks pass by and I started to hear those whispers even more clearly. There was a man and two women. So after helping my mom with the dishes, I lay down in my bed to listen to some music and go to sleep. That's when I see my phone suddenly shutting down. I thought it had run out of battery, so I didn't mind it at all. So a few hours pass by, and I'm, and I'm still awake, just reading a book. And then suddenly, out of nowhere, 
I hear the second lady. Like I feel her sitting beside me and talking to me in a hushed tone. My heart stops as I look around the room and the lights are out. But when I wake up, I hear some light beeping nearby and soft sobbing of my mother. I try to stand up, but two people in white co coats shush me and told me to stay still. I start to panic and shout, Mom! I see my, my mother walking towards me with a very sad face. As I ask her what happened, she tells me everything. So apparently the house we rented had operations in them and of three people who died during a terroristic attack. We had not previously known about that. So, about three people. There was a 70-year-old grandfather and 66-year-old grandmother and a 38-year-old daughter-in-law. So after all that, I took therapy for over three years and we, and then became mentally stable. And I'm sorry. Sorry time on how this crazy dude tried to kidnap me in public. So this was like a year ago or something, and my mom was selling a fridge because we got it in the wrong color, and the place we got it from didn't allow us to return it, so we sold it. After maybe an hour, a nice lady came, and she was like, can I have this fridge? My mom was like, yes. We were so happy, we even got a sale, so yeah, that's fun. The lady gave me some money, which was nice. After that, we went to my mom's salon and just started doing customer's hair. Now, this is when the funny stuff happens. So, it was maybe 6 o'clock, and I was just vibing in my salon chair when this dude comes in. I wasn't too in shock, because sometimes girls come in with their husbands to, to do their hair. But this guy looked like he was in his 50s. But then again, my mom does old people's hair as well. This man came in and said, return us the money or this girl dies. He was pointing at me. My mom said, you would never take my daughter. He said he would if he didn't get his money back. We soon found out it was the money from the fridge. Mom said, please leave the premises, but the man said no. My mom finally dialed the police, and then he started to run. The police came, and I was a lucky girl who had to explain what he looked like. We soon found out that this guy was guilty for five kidnaps and other stuff which, which I can't mention. Then my mom said she will keep a lookout for anything that looks suspicious. The police left and we went to do the groceries. My mom told me to stay by her, but me, being the little brat I am, I wanted to catch the thief. I found him in the same shop as me and I started to panic. He saw me and started bolting like there was no tomorrow. So I bolted too, because if I didn't, there wouldn't be a tomorrow. Yes, yeah, so I started running and saw my mom. Luckily, my mom went to the gym a lot, so she held him back. The police came and got him arrested. I still think about him to this day, and I wonder if he'll come back. Sorry, time. Me and my mom had an experience with a Karen, and she almost called the cops. So, about a year ago, me and my mom were at a grocery store, and we had just gotten out. So, my mom knew the car was parked, but there were two of the exact same cars across from each other. One was my mom's, and one was Karen's. Yes, same car, model, same year, and same color. So my mom thought that Karen's car was her car, so she ever so slightly touched Karen's car with the car. But my mom just kept walking because she thought it was her car. Then we realized it wasn't her car, and she, and she just said, eh, it's okay, we didn't hit it that hard. So then we just started unpacking our groceries into our trunk. trunk. And then all of a sudden, this lady, aka Karen, comes barging out of her car, yelling, Did you hit my car? She literally was screaming so loud, I dropped the bag I was holding. So then my mom said, oh, I'm sorry, I thought it was our car. And then she goes, no, you didn't. You did it on purpose. So she just kept going off about how my mom was such a bad person. So then I just started crying, and my mom says, stop yelling. You're scaring my child. And then she goes into my face and yells, well, it's not my fault. She ain't tough. So I just got into the backseat and cried for a bit more. But I could still hear her. She was yelling at my mom. So she got mad and my mom was literally being really polite. So then she asked for my mom's insurance card and my mom agreed and then she goes and takes pick up her license plate. So then my mom asks for her insurance card and Karen refuses. So she said, okay, then you can't have mine. She said, no. Then she called her husband and says, this lady hit my car and is refusing to give me her insurance. So the husband, aka, oh, sorry, asks, are there scratches? She says, well, I can't see it because it is raining. 
I just started laughing because there's literally none. Anyways, so then she stood cussing and kept going off to my mom and finally says, you're a dumb bunny. Like, what the heck does that even mean? And then drives off. The end. Story time. Me and my friend, let's call her Layla. Well, Layla was my closest friend in town and we went in the same grade, in second grade. So her and I were chilling at recess and then she said to me, Hey, Adriana, how about we pull a prank on our teacher? So, of course, me being dumb, I said, sure. Then she said, okay, here's the plan. To scare our teacher at 2 a.m., okay? Let's break into school and break the wind into our classroom. Then, me being nervous, I said, that's really scary and dangerous, though. She didn't care, though, and at the time, she said she broke in and broke the windows to our classroom, and you'll never believe what she did next. When the principal found out and she asked who did it in front of our class, Layla said, Adriana did. She told me yesterday at recess, and I was shocked. Now I know she was using me to get her in, in a safe zone and me in big trouble. So I said, she's lying. you got to believe me. My teacher said, Adriana, my last name, if you did break in, you're going to be expelled. Layla smirked and stared at me. And my whole class did too, with mad faces at me. And my class made Layla popular, so they teamed up against me. I started crying, and the principal called my parents. And when they got at the school, well, here's where things got interesting. My parents walked in the office with with me and had big smirks on their faces. I was still crying because I was really scared how my parents would react to my behavior, and you'll never guess how they did. When the principal said, your child, Adriana, has broken into our school, do you have any proof to deny this? My mom said, well, we have cameras in our house to see where she's up to at night, morning, etc. And when we got on the, and then when we got the call on what she did, we checked the footage and never saw her get out of bed. The principal gasped and stomped back to, up to the classroom and yelled to Layla, who was gulping hardly while looking at him. And the principal said, Layla, her last name, you lied and took advantage of everyone's trust. By now, tears were gone. my tears were gone and I was smiling at her. She started crying because she didn't want to be expelled and her parents got told everything. She got expelled and if you're wondering how she broke in, well, in her parents' garage they had a hammer and, and her parents didn't have enough money to buy cameras, so they never knew how she got out. Well, Layla and her family moved and, um, um, and I don't even know what's happening to Leah. And by the way... Um, how I know she had a hammer in her garage? Well, that's because I visited her, visited her house, and she gave me a painting set for my birthday, and I had two head in, in her garage, and plus, she left evidence all over the floor. She literally had the hammer left on the floor. So, yeah, I'm still hoping Layla got karma after what happened. End of story. Hello, I hope you're having a wonderful day. So, um, I, like I said, um, and I kind of the middle of the video almost, um, those stories I just heard with my voice, they're not actually mine. I got this, those stories from the comment section of this video, of this, um, channel. I'll put the, the link to the, to the channel in the description with the link section. It might not work, but I'll leave the person's name in the description. Um, if you don't want me using those stories, just tell me in the comments that I'll take the video down or take your story out the video. Okay, thank you. Hello, everyone. It's me. <laughs> so, I'm doing this thing on my channel now where, like, at the end of the video, I'll make a little separate video like this, explaining things or whatever disclaimers I need to address. So, for this video, I do have a few disclaimers. Um, I'm, so, I'm super sorry if you got scared from the beginning stories. They were kind of creepy. And, but, um, yeah. So... The other stories, too, that you heard um, me doing a voiceover of, those weren't mine either. I actually got them off this girl's ch um, YouTube channel comment section. She was playing obbies and, like, playing, like, story time TikToks. Weren't hers either, but just saying, I don't know why I said that. Um, so, and then she told her, like, subscribers to put theirs in the comments. 
so she can make her dad die, and she did, and so I got them off that, too. Um, and so they were just some stories of her subscribers. If you do not want your story in my video, please comment down below or contact me, please, so that I could, like, edit it out if you don't want it in there, so I can edit it out and take it out, like, within the video. Oh, yeah. Um... So yeah, um, and yeah, those stories were not mine. I got those off the comment section. The random people's stories, I don't know them. They were just there on the comment section. Anyways, um, um, I'm just quick disclaimer. I'm not gonna probably be filming makeup videos for a while because I've been dealing with issues with my skin. So, cause like, so my face, uh, just my face like has been like really dry and a few days ago i noticed that i would touch it and it hurt a lot and because i like to go like this a lot or just like that or i like scratch my face or whatever just just like this and that's it um see like that my eye got my dry got it got it but like i was scratching my forehead or like right here and it hurt so much after i touched it and i was like what's wrong and i like told my mom and she's like oh then just don't scratch it <laughs> So, yeah, I just, like, try not to scratch it, but I scratched it anyways, because it was itchy, and I kept forgetting and forgetting, so it really hurt, and then I noticed later that day, or in the next, or the next day later, I can't remember, my, there was, like, white stuff on my face, and I noticed my face was peeling, it was starting to peel, I don't know what it was, it was just because of the cold water, probably, because where I live, it's been snowing, and it's been really cold, when they said there was going to be six more weeks of winter, they really meant there was gonna be six more weeks of winter. It's literally snowing outside as I'm speaking. Sorry. But yeah, it's probably because of the cold winter. And it really hurts. And it's all, like, red and itchy. And I look horrible. So that's why I don't have my other lights on. Because I don't want you to see my face. Um, because I look horrible. I'm online school, too. You know what I do for my camera? I lift it up like that. And occasionally, I'll just go play it on there. Just, like, go like this. That's all. That's what I do. I don't want them to see my face because I'm horrible. Um, but yeah, just saying that. And another thing, another thing, if you guys want to see more like long videos like this, please tell me. Or if you want short videos or both videos, tell me. And give me video ideas as always, please, if you want to see any type of content. And last thing, I'm so sorry, these little things are going to be so long. Um, but yeah, so tell me good ideas and i actually really enjoy filming the morning routine videos or just like morning videos so tell me if you guys want to see more like morning routine videos or whatever they're just so fun to edit and film i love filming them um but uh, yeah so tell me if you want to see more morning routine videos okay I love you all. Remember to subscribe, like, and comment. And I'll see you all in the next video. Goodbye. Have a wonderful day. <laughs> I was hanging with you and then I realized I didn't think it was true. I was surprised when I found out I'd fall in love with you. I didn't want to believe my feelings for you. I didn't want to believe that I could lose you If I told you just how I felt But I can't help it I'm falling